Hey everybody, uh, this video is about Tridacna crocea, which is a common species of giant clam and it's the smallest one too. Now regardless of its size, uh, this is one of the burrowing species and it uses its pedal mantle to dissolve holes in coral skeletons and in limestone rocks and it lives in the hole that it makes. And as one of these clams grows, it just makes the hole bigger and bigger. And most of them make a hole that's deep enough so that the upper margin of the shell is pretty much even with the top of the burrow. And that's why you can't see the shell of this one. It's down in its burrow. So this species is oftentimes called the boring clam. Okay, so here's a mixed bag of croceas, and you can see that they come in a lot of different looks. Of course they do. Now, you can hit pause if you want to look at them a little while longer, and of course you can hit pause at any time during these videos. And here are a few more to look at. And again, you can see that they have a wide range of appearances. Now, that was a representative sample of this species, but if you go take a look at my online photo albums, you can find a lot more pictures of this one. So, if you want to see more of them, head over to jameswfothery.com and you'll find a link to those albums. Next, we've got a few shells here, and all of these shells are typical of the species. Let's take a closer look at some, though, and go over their characteristics. As I said a minute ago, Crocea is the smallest of the giant clams, and they really only get up to about 15 centimeters or so, uh, but really a 10 to 12 centimeter specimen would be considered a large one. Um, aside from that, the shell is also its grayish white as usual, but sometimes it's tinted with a little bit of yellow or orange or kind of pinkish orange. And if you look at these two valves, you can see that croceas, they're oftentimes slightly to moderately elongated. Uh, the hinge line is always less than half the length of the shell, and it might be as little as one third the length of the shell. And the valves typically have six to ten relatively flat folds, uh, and four or five of those are maybe slightly more pronounced than the others. I, I say maybe, though, because sometimes the valves are almost smooth, aside from a bunch of little small undulating lines or growth bands that cover their surfaces. Crocea shells are usually strongly inflated, too. I mean, they're typically kind of fat, uh, except for when they're really small. And if you take a look, you can see that the upper margin of each valve is symmetrical to the other, and they're usually topped with four or five smoothly curving and interdigitating projections. So uh, the valves can close tightly together, and these clamps can really seal themselves up when they want to. Next, even though croceas are small, they typically have the largest bissel openings of any of the tridacnines. Now, not only are their bissel openings usually one-third to one-half the width of the shell, they're also typically two-thirds to three-fourths of the distance between the umbos and the shell's edge. You can see here, they're big. This large opening, in combination with an appropriately sized byssus, allows croceas to form a strong bissel attachment. And it also allows for the complete extension and withdrawal of their oversized pedal mantle. Now, again, that's the part of the clam that makes the burrow that one lives in. Now, when it comes to having scoots or not, like I said, crocea usually lives in a relatively deep burrow, with the top of the shell roughly even with the top of its burrow. So, most croceas don't have any scoots because they live in a hole. Typically, if there are any scoots at all, uh, they're only thin ones and they're near the upper margin of the shell, right at the top because the upper margin or the upper part of the shell, it may be sticking out of the burrow just a bit if it's not quite as deep as the shell is tall. If you take a good look at this one, you can see it actually has a few very light but also very tightly spaced scoots right up at the top of the shell. So this clam was probably sticking out of its burrow just a bit. And there are a few scoots near the upper margin, but there are no scoots on the rest of the shell. Likewise, if we look at aquacultured croceas, uh, they can look pretty different, like these two. Now, aquacultured clams, they can't burrow into the bottom of a cement or fiberglass tank, which they're reared in, so it's not uncommon to find farm specimens with a lot of well-developed and closely spaced scoots. In other words, if they're given the room to do so, croceas can produce shells that are covered with scoots, and they may look very different than individuals living in the sea. Oh yeah, and if you'll go back just a couple of minutes to those pictures of live croceas, uh, take a look at the last few. You'll see that lots of those have scoots, and most of those are aquacultured specimens, and there's one that you can see is kind of sticking out of its burrow a bit. So, some other good examples for you. Okay, that's enough about the shells. 
Next, we've got a couple of pictures of typical inhalant siphons. Now, Crocea almost always has lots of these little small tentacles around the margin of the inhalant siphon, and you can see that some of them have fancy little branches on them. They're never really big, though. Now, when it comes to Crocea's eyes, well, they're pretty variable. Now, it's very common to have a row of tightly spaced eyes around the margin of the mantle, right there towards the edge, and lots of them have a bright ring around them, but not always. Sometimes that line of eyes around the margin is missing, or the eyes are widely spaced, and lots of times they don't have the bright ring around them either. But there are always at least a few eyes. It's also common to see at least a few papillae. Now, these little bumps or knobs scattered over the mantle, and these are typically tipped with eyes too. Now, sometimes the papillae also have a little bright ring around them, but lots of times they don't. I also want to point out one more common feature to take note of, and that's these little markings that you can see here. Um, lots of croceas have these. Definitely not all, but lots of them. Take a look at the little oval to kind of ovalish markings on these three clams, and notice that they're relatively light in color, and also have a little bit darker ring or a little darker line around them. And with that said, now don't forget, you can go check out my online photo albums, and you'll see that quite a few croceas have these same sorts of markings. Anyway, to finish up, I've got a little bit of video of some Indonesian croceas living in the sea. And I'm going to start with the tiniest little baby crocea that I've ever seen. Now, my dive guide spotted it, and I would have never seen it, and I couldn't believe they noticed it. It is tiny, but take a look. Okay, so that's it for this species. Now, if you don't already have one, how about getting a copy of one of my books? I'd really appreciate it. And do keep in mind that I've got more videos on YouTube, and I'll be adding more of them in the future. And the same goes for my online albums, of course. I'll add more pictures as I get them. And with that said, I'm done. Thanks for watching.